people from other parishes, welcome. The entrance hymn, many of you are aware, I mean, you are familiar with the hymn, To God Be the Glory, but we are starting with the refrain first. Stop, and uh, the people are requested to turn around for a photo shoot. Okay, this is a very special arrangement. I will announce this again after the final blessing. Okay. When I say turn around, means you turn facing the main entrance. <laughs> yeah. Also today, Bishop is celebrating his thirty seventh sacerdotal ordination anniversary, 37 years as a priest. Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned with my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have to do. To my God, to my God, to my most grievous God, therefore I ask as a daily devotion all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest demanded an explanation of the apostles. We gave you a formal warning, he said, not to preach in this name. And what have you done? You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, 
and seemed determined to fix the guilt of this man's death on us. In reply, Peter and the apostles said, Obedience to God comes before obedience to men. It was the God of our ancestors who raised up Jesus, but it was you who had him executed by hanging on a tree. By his own right hand, God has now raised him up to be leader and savior, to give repentance and forgiveness of sins through him to Israel. We are witnesses to all this, we and Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those to obey him. They warned the apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus and release them. And so they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, glad to have had the honor of suffering humiliation for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. In my vision, I, John, heard the sound of an immense number of angels gathered round the throne and the animals and the elders. There were 10,000 times 10,000 of them and thousands upon thousands shouting, the lamb that was sacrificed is worthy to be given power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Then I heard all the living things in creation, everything that lives in the air and on the ground and under the ground and in the sea crying. To the one who is sitting on the throne and to the lamp, be all praise, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. And the four animals said, Amen. And the elders prostrated themselves to worship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. It was by the Sea of Tiberias. And it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two more of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. They replied, we'll come with you. They went out and got into the boat, but caught nothing that night. It was light by now, and there stood Jesus on the shore, though the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus called out, Have you caught anything, friends? And when they answered, No, he said, Throw the net out to starboard, and you'll find something. So they dropped the net, and there were so many fish that they could not haul it in. The disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. At these words, it is the Lord. Simon Peter, who had practically nothing on, wrapped his cloak around him and jumped into the water. The other disciples came on in the boat, towing, towing the net and the fish. They were only about a hundred yards from the land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw that there was some bread there and a charcoal fire with fish cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore, full of big fish, 153 of them. And in spite of there being so many, the net was not broken. 
Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples was bold enough to ask, Who are you? They knew quite well it was the Lord. Jesus then stepped forward, took the bread, and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after rising from the dead. After the meal, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked him the third time, Do you love me? And said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young, you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt around you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words, he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this, he said, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, <clears throat> a very happy feast day to all of you. You have seen me virtually, now I'm physically present. <laughs> Today when we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph, what is it that brings us to mind about the person of St. Joseph? The gospel said that he was a just man. But most of all, his justice was expressed in his commitment to Mary, to Jesus, and to his work. Joseph, we know from the gospel, was faithful to God Faithful to man, faithful to his work. When he discovered that Mary was pregnant with a child, a miraculous intervention of God, he decided to put Mary aside because he felt unworthy to be the spouse of Mary and to be the father of the child that was not from himself. But when the angel explained to him, immediately he assumed the duties as a spouse and became the foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Joseph was faithful to both Mary and to Jesus, raising him up even with all the trials and challenges, like when they faced persecution from King Herod, they had to flee to Egypt. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the person of St. Joseph, truly we could say this is a man who is faithful in every way. 
But my dear friends, honestly, if we ask ourselves, how many of us can be like St. Joseph in terms of fidelity, in terms of commitment? Even in the working world today, in those days, when people work for an organization, it is almost for life. In fact, most people would take only one job and work right to the end. And the person who was faithful to the organization, of course, was highly praised and rewarded because of loyalty. But today, the situation is different. If you stay in an organization for too long, they say, maybe you lack exposure. You lack experience. You have no initiative. So, you'll be stuck in your position for life. What's the difference? In those days, loyalty was to a group of people because most companies were family-owned business. Today, you are answerable to the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? We cannot see them. You are just called to be of service to an organization who pays you well. They hire and fire. Whoever can bring the most profit to the company will have their bonus increased. It is not a matter of loyalty. It is a matter of productivity. But this is also happening today, even in our relationships. Those of us who are married, how many people today are committed to the vows that they have taken on their wedding day? How many of us are faithful to our spouse, to our children? For those of us who are in relationship, today we change relationships like changing clothes. Relationship does not seem to last. That is why there is a high, increasing number of divorce rate and failed relationships. The call to be faithful, to be committed to a relationship is not so simple today because we are living in a very affluent world where even if there were no physical distancing, now we can do virtual, we can go online. Uh, we can even talk about romance, discuss very intimate things online. You don't need to see, don't need to meet the person physically. My dear brothers and sisters, if that is the case for human relationship, then let me ask you, what about fidelity to God? How many of us truly could say that I'm faithful to God, faithful to my baptismal vows that I have made and renew at Easter. When we look at Jesus Christ in today's second reading, the Lamb who was slain for us all, committed to us even unto death, and therefore raised in glory. In his second read, in the first reading with the Acts of the Apostles, they were brought before the Sanhedrin, and they told the Sanhedrin, these uneducated apostles, fishermen, obedience to God comes before obedience to men. They were confident, even of proclaiming Jesus as Lord and Savior to these so-called educated theologians. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look at ourselves, will we be able to stand up for our faith? Most of us are very frightened of the world today. We are silenced by the world. 
You say too much about your faith, too much about your doctrines, your morality, you will be attacked. And so we all prefer to be anonymous Catholics. People will not know us, but we know. We come to church secretly, secretly of course. Don't let people know. Don't let your friends know. We come to church. Why is it that we have failed? But my dear brothers and sisters, before you condemn yourselves for failing to be a good Christian, for failing in your relationships, even in your marriage, it is good for us to see things in perspective. The apostles in today's gospel, before they could stand before the Sanhedrin, proclaiming Jesus as their Lord and Savior with bonus, they were cowards. They abandoned Jesus when Jesus was in need. They denied Jesus when Jesus was brought before the Sanhedrin and Pilate. It means to say, for the apostles to arrive at where they were when we read the first reading, it took them time. It was not something that happened overnight. And so too, I want to tell you, when you make your baptismal commitment, when you make your marriage commitment, when you make your commitment at ordination, we make with sincerity. But, to tell you honestly, we do not know the price that we have to pay. Many people happily get married. Huh? They, of course, wedding day should be happy. Uh, just wait. Just wait. One year, two years, the longer, the miserable they become. What has happened to the joy of being a priest? The joy of ordination, the joy of being married. Oh, I want to be with her for the rest of my life. Mm. I want to love her. I want to serve her. Oh, just wait. Huh? TKK, Tang Kuku, just wait, wait. <laughs> Won't be long. My dear brothers and sisters, we have failed in our commitments in different ways. But there is a difference. The apostles failed in their commitment to Jesus. Jesus gave them a second chance. Unfortunately for human beings, even though we are fallible, we don't give others who have failed a second chance. If your spouse is unfaithful to you, that's it. Divorced. No other way. If you do something wrong today, the entire society will condemn you. If not, the social media will condemn you. You have no face, no second chance. And you look at yourself, maybe I'm truly rotten. That's why some people commit suicide. Because they don't believe in themselves anymore. But Jesus gave the apostles a second chance. Jesus reached out to them. They went back fishing because they gave up. They thought their cause was gone, the death of Jesus. They were too guilty, too sad even to talk about Jesus. They went back fishing, went back to their old trade. And Jesus stood at the shore. It was dark. Because without Jesus, there is only darkness. And Jesus stood at the shore early in the morning and he called up to them. Have you caught anything? Jesus wanted to bring them back to the day when they were converted when he made the first miraculous catch of fish. He was there when it was dawned. 
And then Jesus invited the apostles to come and he prepared breakfast for them. That means the Eucharist. He had a meal. He reconciled with the apostles. It wasn't apostles who reconciled with Jesus. Huh? That's the beautiful thing about God. God comes to reconcile with us. When we are the ones who need to be reconciled to God, He reaches out to us. As if this was not enough, St. Peter, the future leader of the church, he was really, really an embarrassment to the apostles and to Jesus himself. He was the one who said, I will die for you, I will fight for you. But he denied Jesus in front of some strangers and servants. And Jesus gave him a second chance. Jesus came to heal Peter. Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? The first two times Jesus says, would you love me unconditionally? Total loyalty. And, Jesus, and St. Peter replied, I will love you as much as I can. He no longer was so presumptuous to say, I will die for you. No more, no more, no more. That was a big mistake. He says, I will love you as much as I could. And the beauty is that Jesus accepted Peter's limitations in love. So the third time, Jesus asked Peter, okay, would you love me with the love that you could give to me? And he says, I do. It is really beautiful. Jesus accepts us at the level where we are. That's why Jesus told St. Peter, the time will come, however, you will have to go where you don't want to go. But not now, not now. You will not be ready. And it's true, my dear brothers and sisters, for those of us who undertake commitments, that's why there are some people Today, people are not getting married because they are fearful of commitments. I'm frightened. Huh? Our young people today are frightened of commitments. That is why they are changing friends, changing jobs all the time. Because commitment means sacrifice. But those of us who believe in commitment, the time will come. Don't ask me how we're going to go through the marriage. Don't tell me how we're going to go through this beautiful, this young, handsome seminarians here. Don't tell, ask me how we're going to become a priest, how we're going to take up the challenges. God will supply the strength. You will fail. Let me tell you, you will fail. You will make mistakes. Like everybody else. But, God will give you that strength to recover and to grow. And the time will come when you'll be ready to say with Jesus, I will follow you, even to the cross. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God. I 
We have been called to a kingdom of glory, but the path to that kingdom is the way of the cross. Only with our Father's help can we make that journey. Let us ask Him now for that help. For our Pope, that His life of loving service will inspire the world to believe in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that the hope of this Easter season will inspire them to look beyond themselves for answers to the problems which beset humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the joy of our faith will make God present to those who no longer believe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy our For each of us, that having been raised in Jesus, we may be signs and instruments of his hope in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy our For the husbands the world over, may they love their wives and children as much as St. Joseph loved Mary and Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here to honour him, may we learn from St. Joseph how to be chaste, humble and faithful to God and our promises. Let us pray to the Lord. For our neophytes, those baptized and brought into full communion with us at the Easter Vigil, that they may recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, your mercy hear me. We pray for active participation and the grace of openness towards one another, so that the synodal process, as initiated by Pope Francis, may renew our commitment to walk with one another towards the vision of God for his church in Singapore. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we also pray for own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy hear us. Father in heaven, our hearts fill with joy as we sing our Alleluia's. Strengthen us with our Eucharistic Saviour, that we may remain faithful to the new life you have placed within us. We ask this through our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ, our brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His children, for His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim to you, O Lord. But in this time but before, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the hosts of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the light of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed and himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your heaven, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Render we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ.
May He make us an eternal offering to You, so that we may obtain an inheritance with Your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph as well, the blessed Apostles, glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, our patron saints, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in Your presence we rely for an unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat for a while. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you very much for this celebration of this Feast of St. Joseph. For two years, we were not able to have this, like a big celebration. Today, really, the, the massive crowd of people are here, really, from the morning, even yesterday, even sunset mass, even, really, St. Joseph had the wonders. And I thank you for those who are from the different parish of churches uh, devoted to come to show that they got this, this, this St. Joseph. Hopefully, just pray hard, next year we can have our food and fun fair. I'm sure you're all looking forward to it. So we ask you to thank you very much and always thank His Grace for coming to celebrate this grace fulfilled moment. Thank Him. And today is the 1st of May and His, today is His Grace, 37 years of His Sacerdotal Priesthood. What an opportunity that we have with Him on today's ordination. And also we thank Him for the Lord to continue to bless Him and give Him good health, blessing of Him. And an appreciation, we, we in the parish want to give Him a token of this that we have planned for Him and a token we give Him to remind Him. Remember us, St. Joseph, on the 1st of May. Let's put our hands together, brother. The choir will now sing the song Vivat Vivat to welcome our bishop and wish him good health and long life. A big round of applause. So, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for your anniversary uh, wish and your congratulations given to me. Um, 37 years uh, seems to be a very long time. Uh, but I'm still quite young, I'm only 65. <laughs> I was ordained at the age of 27. Huh? That time, I was like an innocent lamb led to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into. And so, but these 37 years, I think the grace of God has uh, been with me to see me through year after year and committing myself to the people of God, to His service. I know it is not uh, by my own efforts alone, and especially in the last nine years as your bishop, uh, has been a journey, has been a struggle in many ways, and uh, I know that all these things would not be possible if, if not for your press and your support. So I really want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for so, so many people I know. They've been praying for me, uh, encouraging me, and uh, I'm very grateful 
to you all. Because at the end of the day, uh, the best gift you can give to the bishop, you notice that every Eucharist, we pray for the bishop. That is the best gift. Because without your prayers, I might lose my vision, I, must, I might be weak, lacking fortitude to carry out the will of God. Without your prayers, I might lack courage. So I ask you that you will continue to pray for me, for wisdom, for fortitude, for humility in the service of the people of God. So thank you so much uh, for your greetings and for the fathers uh, to what we call uh, announce to you my anniversary. Normally I don't do that, but anyway. So thank you, fathers. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, at the same time, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for uh, returning to the church physically. And I think it's very important to continue to encourage those who are still not uh, uh, so used to the online mass, the virtual masses, to try to encourage them because it's a different uh, experience, not just because you can receive the Eucharist uh, uh, sacramentally here, but also it's the coming together as a body of Christ, worshipping together, uh, the beautiful singing of the choirs and all the liturgical ministers, the servers and all this, will add to our experience of the sacredness and His presence. So, uh, and of course, more people come back means to say we, they need more helpers. Uh, so that's why when I was in, during the COVID, a lot of people told me, you know, they, I mean, there are so many bishops everywhere in, in Singapore. So they told me, uh, you know, you, Bishop, you must do, increase the number of muscles, but no volunteers. How to increase? <laughs> if people can talk, people can say, oh, we want this, we want that. Yeah, but you know, you cannot expect a Father Chris and Father Peter Chang to do all these things. So we need the people to come and help. So mm, continue to uh, give your helping hand to the parish. And finally, my most grateful thanks to uh, Father Christopher, the parish priest here. And Father Peter Chang, they are very devoted pastors. This parish is very, very fortunate. Huh? The day when they have to be transferred out, you will cry buckets of tears. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so you've got very, two very devoted, uh, very loving and caring pastors. And uh, really, St. Joseph has been blessing you. And you've been praying to St. Joseph uh, well. And they just too, they really imitate uh, St. Joseph. Huh? So I really am very grateful. Even Father Christopher, you know, his health is not too good, but uh, he gives his best. And I think that is all that we ask uh, from him. And that you continue to pray for him. Huh? So that you will go. Yeah. And of course, we thank Deacon Robin for uh, assisting in the Mass. Uh, uh, he has, uh, he's also blessed uh, to have two great mentors uh, helping him to be uh, for him to, to be a priest. So we thank Deacon Robin as well. And so to one and all, thank you so much and uh, God bless you and continue to pray for us all. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
Request the people in front to turn back facing the main entrance for a photo session with the bishop. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your very active participation. Have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. I think you can uh, meet up with the bishop at the main entrance of the church. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.